Yes. So we were talking yesterday about the part where PCAF was saying you can't prove a negative. That you can't prove that something doesn't exist. And you were kind of asking about, you related to like, can you prove that you don't have, like prove that you don't like tennis or something like that. And I was saying, at first I was doubting that you, it was the same, but then I think I decided that it is the same. You can't prove that something isn't there. You can't prove the lack of evidence. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to even think of it in that way. And it really is a matter of the way you make the claim. If, if you change the claim to be prove that God does exist, that is fine to say, because you're asking for evidence and you're asking the, them to provide you with something. But you can't ask somebody to provide the non-existence of something or provide the evidence that there is no evidence. It just doesn't make sense to even do that. So as long as you reframe the question, like you should never ask a question like prove that it doesn't exist. You, if you ever find yourself doing that, rephrase the question so you're, you're actually asking for evidence for a thing that does exist or that could exist. You follow? Yeah, I'm following. I'm just thinking. Um, but it can, uh, may, maybe this is, okay. Cause, okay. So the non-existence is one thing. Um, but then if you don't like tennis, that's to me is a thing as in, cause you may have an active feeling towards tennis as opposed to um, why, I guess may, maybe it's a little thing of phrasing, but like, as opposed to why don't you like tennis um, if you don't have any feeling towards it, but if you actually don't like tennis, um, then it's not a, I'm just what I'm trying to get at. So if you if you actively don't like tennis, that's one thing, right? You agree with me on that? Like, and something follows from that. Like, oh, you know, because it reminds me of this or because I'm just not that into sports. I don't like competition. I was just like, you know, working on my own thing. I don't really care to beat someone else. That's like an active, that's a reason why you don't like tennis. Um, and then there's also the thing of which you actually mentioned last session um, of, uh, like prove that um, he didn't commit the murder and the way you prove it. And this was in OPA. And I think you mentioned in this last session too, was like, if there are contradictory facts, like, well, you know, the murder was in Ohio, Texas, whatever, I don't know, Ohio, whatever, <laughs> whatever the places are in the States, it was the murder was in Ohio and um, the guy was in Botswana. So like he didn't, he didn't commit the murder because yeah. there's a certain fact that contradicts. So if we, if we know that, then it's not simply that it follows from the non-existence of something, but how do we refine that? So it's like, it's not just the non-existence or because if there's a contradictory fact, then it's um, yeah, it, you can prove it. Yeah. I think the way to refine, at least how to discuss this is that, we have to refer to things in a positive sense as in prove that it does exist or prove that something is there rather than the negative phrasing of that statement. Like mm -hmm. you can't prove the negative form of a statement, but you can prove the positive. I think that's the better way to think of it that. Okay. That it'd be incoherent to ask for evidence that there is no evidence in the world like you're literally saying there is no evidence and there's no way to even prove it because there's no like evidence has nothing to do with it it's just you're saying it's not even there in the first place and that there couldn't be and but you can prove something through the evidence and you say oh i don't i didn't find the evidence and you can say oh therefore it's false because at least you can interpret or evaluate it that way oh okay so it's more like in the case of the murder, it's more like um, you need, if someone accuses him of committing the murder, you can say he was in Botswana 
which contradicts him being you need uh what is it motive means and opportunity. um opportunity or something like that and he didn't have the means because he was in botswana so that's like yeah. is that how it works so you go you're trying to you first you you don't go prove that he didn't i'm confused about i don't know this yeah i'm confused now prove that he didn't i get that like when we're talking about god prove that god doesn't exist if it's a fact attached from reality you can't do anything with it but um in the case of like proving that someone didn't do something um if it's not up uh oh yeah okay i see what you're saying so like in order for someone to make that accusation in the first place like if it's not to be arbitrary that there's two guys right so there's one guy in um ohio and there's one guy in botswana and both are sus uh uh suspects of the murder like no one would just arbitrarily accuse the guy in botswana like you'd start with some fact like oh he hated he hated the guy that was murdered and so so it is an accusation in that sense he hated the guy who was murdered therefore he committed the murder and then yes someone will say okay well he was in botswana so he couldn't yeah that's what i'm trying to say yeah okay cool I follow. that's how you should think of it okay because um, then you've transformed it into something you can't evaluate you can't say is right. true or is it false because he actually has something there to work with right right uh which there was a quote in there i can't remember where it was from of like nothing follows from nothing uh, yeah, I don't recall that quote, but it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, cool. So I have the document open. Should I share screen or how do you want to? Uh, share screen works well. Okay. Well. see it yes certainty is contextual yeah we we sort of discussed this uh yesterday and i was having trouble because it's a difficult thing of like any more thoughts before i move on from this section do you remember i was saying like well it just seems so like that doesn't seem like maybe i'm trying to get at some kind of omniscient certainty but it just feels so like how do i ever have confidence that's how i feel about it now because there's always some unknown unknown that can just kill me, <laughs> basically. The unknown unknowns, yes, those were always exist. I think the unknown unknowns. Yeah. I guess not. All right, we'll go to the next. We'll go to the next. I'll uh, we'll cover it. Um, I can I'll, clarify uh, that, do like a write up. I, yeah, I would need a drawing actually to explain it better than I have. I don't know if there's a drawing tool in Zoom. Uh, I'll draw something later then. Yeah, cool. Uh, it's something I, I'll definitely write a bit about this too, because it, it is interesting to me. Okay, so let's see this thing. Um, so he's talking about the same case where they do research on blood studies and eight bloods are compatible. Uh, and... Okay, so they, he's saying that the initial generalization is valid. Okay, so he's just comparing two different mentalities. Um, so one is, ah, uh, it's all the whole generalization was unreliable. Science is exploded theories. Everything is relative versus A bloods are compatible. However, in this situation with this factor, they're not compatible, or th these two factors cause incompatibility um yeah all right yeah so this is something i was thinking about because i think I don't, I don't know if you've heard of nasim talib uh he yeah. writes a lot i think he's influenced a lot by papa and he writes about risk and markets and this kind of stuff and he always writes about like it's always the unknowns that kill you yeah um and so I can see that that's a case, but it's almost like there's nothing you can do about it because it's um, at least in objectivist epistemology, you go, okay, well, you can gain knowledge, but then something might kill you because you have contextual certainty. 
that this yeah, like and you can't even know. speculate about unknowns because you're like well where is the evidence for there being another factor if there is no evidence it's an arbitrary claim therefore there is no other factor or no no you don't even say that you just get rid of the the idea of there being another factor am i yeah, thinking about this right because it seems strange to me well it would be an incoherent question if we're an arbitrary claim like you can't prove it's truthhood or falsehood it's just there isn't anything to it that could even be wrong it's not even wrong right. would be what arbitrary would be like yeah. there's nothing to go on but as far as unknown unknowns the things you don't know or don't even know to ask about yeah you'll you just won't know that you you can't be certain of those things I, that would be omniscience you, it's just not possible yeah. you can't have certainty of that but as far as certainty within a context. Okay, the difficult part is they must know that the initial generalization is valid. And I'm not sure how wide of a generalization he's talking about. Like you can overgeneralize and I don't know how right. he's determining what would be an overgeneralization. Uh, okay, I see what you're saying. That's when I'm having a trouble time explaining uh, that would need more on his wording, but I can say that there is a point where you can't make the, you don't need to make the claim any more narrow. Like say at, at this date, at this longitude and longitude, at this temperature and at this level of humidity, this plant grew or this plant was green or something like, like you can be certain that in that context it was exactly repeated it would be exactly the same i mean that would be the most narrow way to think of it like at this moment at this time at this location and all these conditions nothing will change the fact that this is how things are at this time even if you come with new factors it doesn't change what happened at that time what would be difficult is how do you expand it to say oh it's at this temperature but it could be at any location in the world or it could be at this time but it doesn't it actually might depend on the humidity right like you you're, don't know so how wide to expand it and that's yeah. the more difficult thing you don't know how many factors are essential for the thing to happen is that what you is that yeah, you don't then, know how much you can abstract away or generalize is what I'm saying. Can you abstract away the location? Like, is the location relevant at all? Can you remove that? Okay, I get it. I'm starting to get it now. So basically the process of abstracting away into the generalization, like oh, this plant will grow, all these bloods are compatible is actually just extracting the essential uh, causal relationships from the thing. And then going, this is what's important. And then you can shift it to different environments and shift some factors and it won't, nothing else will happen. Um, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, at that it's moment, just... at that specific context, it won't, it's exactly that, it's nothing, that's what happened. And it's not like it would change if you knew anything else. I mean, that would, what you saw happen is what would happen. Right, but, but if you, you miss not... an essential factor, then you like you might overgeneralize. Yes, I mean that's the difficult here, difficulty in this part of the what Beekoff is claiming. I don't know to what extent when it becomes an overgeneralization, in which case that'd be an error of thinking and not a proper application of certainty. So I would want to ask him, well, does it change depending on can you overgeneralize here and then the certainty doesn't apply anymore. How do I know if I've gone too far about the generalization? Because he's saying the researcher must know that the initial generalization is valid. So he's saying something, you're generalizing to some degree, but I know for sure you can overgeneralize and because that's something I think he does talk about later. Or at least Rand has talked about like overgeneralization, things like that. And that's the only difficulty I have in explaining this. And I don't have yeah. a better answer for that part right now. Do you think that 
um, all overgeneralizations are a result of an error in thinking. An overgeneralization? Yeah. I. My initial answer is yes. Okay. And in the situation where, let, let's go to this situation where it seems like, I, you know, I guess it would be really helpful to have actual knowledge of like biology because then you, you know, because right now I'm at least sort of just half making this up and it may be the case that um, it's not as difficult as I imagine. Like there's not some, there's not usually some like unknown factor that kills you most of the time. Like the universe is benevolent. You could take it back to metaphysics um, or it's discoverable and it's not like our brains are made to, our minds are made to discover it. So it's not like there's all these random factors that just come and kill you when they hide in the corner. <laughs> but um what I'm thinking about is with the, with this whole thing of like this RH factor that he speaks about, like if it's something that you didn't even know was there and then you've overgeneralized because um, you've gone, well, we've, we've tested it in a few environments as nothing has changed and you've missed some causal relationship. Like to me, I, is that, that's not, it's, how is that like a jump amid something in an error in how's that a problem in logic? If you know what I'm saying, like you could have followed logic, and maybe you still, well, I'm making this up, right? Cause I don't have knowledge of bloods, but it seems like maybe you could have followed logic and then just still made this error and missed this RH factor. I would need to think of principles of reasoning to say, I mean, I'm thinking what would you need to do to what would, what's going on when you overgeneralize? Yeah. Okay. Um, From what you said, at least I thought I understood. I thought I understood overgeneralization as simply missing an essential factor, a factor being some part of the, it's some thing that plays an important part in the causal relationship in the thing that you're observing. And so if you miss something that has like, a, you know, it'd be like looking at man and missing the fact that he's, he has a rash capacity to be rational. Um, and then that's, that would, and then you, and then you, um, I don't know how that works with man, but I yeah, would basically more like, yeah. Okay. Abstracting away too much. So you're, you're throwing a bigger lasso than you should. You're capturing more things than you plan to, than you want to. Isn't that what you do with, with this scenario with the blood types? Like if you've, said, okay, A bloods are compatible because this is, you're not sure what he means by the, like how far to generalize, but let, let's say you say all A bloods are compatible um, and you've missed that there's some factor like the RH factor that's relevant. Um, and so when you generalize to all A bloods are compatible, you've overgeneralized maybe because you've missed the RH, you've like, you've, you've because you've missed the RH factor, whereas yeah. if you knew, I actually don't know, to be honest. I, I did you've abstracted think... it, You would have abstracted it away if you did that. I mean, unknowingly abstracted away or abstracted away something you didn't realize was relevant. Um, I guess it's difficult to say. I'm thinking, how would you know what to generalize in particular? What, what would you, how would you know to abstract some things away? Yeah, I think you would uh, just need to know. I mean, this is more about setting the context than it is about missing a factor or missing some relevant information. But as far as setting the context, that should prevent you from overgeneralizing as, you fo as long as you focus on it narrowly what you know for certain, narrowly what is the case in this like you could hold back on making certain generalizations precisely because you might be new to the science or you know the context you don't have much reason to generalize but like if you never studied blood before like it was ancient greece you might want to be a bit more conservative in the way you do it um a bit more i suppose the certainty depends on how well you set the context. 
And if you, yeah, I think that's the only way to do it. I was just thinking, I suppose you really need knowledge of whatever the contents is. Cause like all of this, all this stuff we're speaking about, like I'm talking about unknown factors, unknown unknowns, generalizations, like has it been in relation to some content, right? Like in this case, we're talking about blood types, which I know nothing about. And so there's always a risk of me just going, Oh, well, what if this happens? Or, but none of it has any basis in reality. Um, and so I guess we need some, 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 thing to reference of which we both have good knowledge and go oh okay that couldn't happen because of this and this or which i like a concrete example is what i mean which i don't i don't have right now yeah i mean i think it's easier if you had more science examples because i think this primarily applies to science where you get into really those difficult questions i don't think you'll run into it as much if you're asking like is the sun going to rise tomorrow like how are you sure maybe if it blows up tomorrow what if there's some unknown factor about the sun that causes it to explode tomorrow and we all die and that's it. There's no more sun and we all die. Like, how do you know that for sure? Yeah. <laughs> and you could apply it to that. That might be a more practical way to think of it. How do you know that the sun's yeah. going to rise? Yeah. And what kind of contextual certainty do you have? You wouldn't just say, oh, it's happened every other day before. Because, I mean... Just because I've been many times, I enough to generalize. Probably not. You'd have to say like, like repeatedly, like in the context of like yesterday at 8 p.m. at this time at this location, the sunset, and those, the same situation repeats itself, and you see it happens again and then and again. As so you could say it given all these factors and every time they happen, the sun will set and nothing's going to change tomorrow. That, I mean, nothing so far is changing. I mean, there's no reason to think it would change, but even if it did, like, you're not going to go predict it's going to blow up because the context is still what it was when it, every, the context is still what it was when the sun set. So I mean, this, it seems like the same events are happening again so therefore the same if event will happen and you don't really need to predict it because the context is always the same but then it might be difficult you might have to widen the context sometimes if say you're in alaska and it doesn't it doesn't set one day because of the tilt of the earth and it just doesn't set in the summer sometime you don't say oh no the sun's never going to set again well, you have to widen your context to say, well, what changed from the, all those other times I saw the sunset? You might say, oh, it's the temperature. Well, you've been cold before and the sun still set, so maybe it's not that. But then you think, oh, it's the latitude. I've never been this far north. Say, so, hmm, that might be it. So that could be the moment you realize you have to, your contextual certainty just doesn't apply there because something changed. You can't make the same conclusion before and so you have to go start looking again for what changed what's different yeah that's a good example it's better than uh for me this uh blood one as in yeah. it makes me rethink like this idea of like some unknown unknown always being around a corner and killing you for lack of knowledge yeah. <laughs> i guess it depends on the field too right like if yes. you work in in a field that you're dealing with things that are part of nature first you're dealing with men. I think that it's different, but. Um, yes, yeah. I agree. Like it, I mean, if you're dealing with like medicine, there's a lot more contextual factors that are very hard to take into account. So that's why those fields are a lot more statistical oriented and a lot more based on like risk assessment and things like that, rather than strictly what's the facts. I mean, they're working with a lot more uncertainty. I was thinking maybe, I don't know anything about, I don't know that much about medicine, but I was just thinking simply of like, if you're trying to generalize about men's behavior versus if you're trying right. to generalize about the behavior of blood or about the behavior of the sun. Yeah. Okay. I think just to mention David Hume, I think talked about the sun and knowing if it's going to set or not. And that's, kind of what he threw out as an example of 
why you should usually be skeptical. I don't, I don't know exactly the context he used it, but really. he's the one I think he originally used that kind of example about like you can't be sure it's going to set again tomorrow or something like that. What do you think is the value of studying you? I think just curiosity. I don't think there's any particular value. He likes asking questions like okay. you do. So, I mean, you might find oh. him interesting. <laughs> the way he asks sure. many questions. Um, uh, all right. So let's see what else. Uh, okay. So what I was thinking, just to make sure I understood this, it seems like what this whole idea, the big picture here is that it's not that, you know, if you learn something new, it destroys the previous generalization. It might just add, I don't know if exception is the right word, but it's, um, it maybe refines it. It like gives you more causal factors. You've like got a few, so you've got something and you just make sure you don't overgeneralize. So your generalization is right, but then it just helps you think in terms of like, okay, it didn't work. The bloods weren't compatible this time. It's not that suddenly all of reality has shifted and everything has changed. You're like some fact, like some things before caused it to be compatible. And now there is some change in context, whether it's one fact or a few that have caused a, a different reaction. And so then it makes you think that way. You're like, okay, what are those factors? And you start looking for factors. Is that what the whole big picture idea of yeah, this I is? I think that's the big picture. Yeah. Re refine is a better word than exception yeah, okay. here. Yeah. You're okay. refining what you know about reality. Exception is like a denial of the previous generalization, right? So it would be. Yeah. I mean, that's why I don't like the word exception. It doesn't have the right connotation. So I prefer refine for that reason. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a look. Do you think. Um, Okay, this is gonna too off course, but we can we can briefly touch on it. So I guess I looked up the definition of factor and circumstance fact or influence that contributes to a result, which to me is mm -hmm. cause, right? A cause basically reduces to cause and effect. Um, yeah, a causal factor, yeah. And then it becomes about just simply picking, uh, there's so many things like location, altitude, digestive status, <laughs> whatever, like that, millions of factors that you like have to pick from and you just have to work out what's causal that that's what i got and which seems like a difficult thing like um it, it is very difficult so well, as you were saying <laughs> let's get rid of this question how would you do that like as you were saying that understanding how the sun operates is easier than understanding how does the human behavior because there's so much that can vary there's so many more factors with people that it just gets harder and harder the more complex the behavior is. Right. Because you um, think about the neurons, even, and the chemicals in the neurons, and that's just so much that you get overwhelmed. And that's why figuring out factors is difficult, especially in psychology. There's different ways of finding factors, like different statistical methods and things like that, that can help you identify factors that might be there that you don't see based on the mathematical relationships between its behavior. But it gets really complicated, of course. Yeah, I'm familiar with it's, it's, I don't do obviously psychology, but in markets, you're not, you don't have access to causal factors. So you might just look for proxies in the same way that they might look for proxies in right. psychology. And then you don't know, like, it's not, there's no, there's no, like it could be something else. It's not makes it really, and you don't, yeah, you just don't know. There's too, there's so many, there might be things you can't measure. Um, you right. can't, what is it? You can't, sometimes it's hard to like uh, redo a study. Um, right. But anyway, different. What, what's the science of discovering causal factors? If there is one, is that induction? Uh, usually that'd be induction. I would just call that inductive reasoning. Yeah, okay. Would you make any distinction between cause and factor in this context? No. Okay. And then what, again, we go back to absolute and I had trouble with that later. I don't understand why they keep adding absolute to stuff. Like 
absolute context. Like I don't, I, I just don't understand that. Uh, we saw it earlier in the metaphysics section too, like absolute or non-absolute, like a thing is or isn't, I don't. Yeah, like what, yeah. I, I guess my question is what extra information is exactly being added in when you say contextual absolute? Wait, where, I'm looking where he said that. Where did Peacock say that? Uh, well, he's talking about all this being contextual, certainty being a contextual absolute yep. and not an absolute. Um, usually when I hear absolute in that context, the way you're saying like the absolute factors, like that's without any regard to any kind of context, just it's, it's a truth detached from any particular context or a truth detached from any particular event like a it's universal true. truth that has nothing to do with the context which might be a Kantian way of thinking actually or at least that's what people often criticize Kant maybe of doing that he's overgeneralizing or capturing too much or trying to um, say it's absolute beyond the context it's not falsifiable um, yeah, that'd be one way to think of it. I mean, absolute would be like, yeah, I mean, it would be unfalsifiable if it, if it were. I mean, you can't prove that something's absolutely universally true in every single possible. I mean, that'd be omniscience. Like that absolute truth would be omniscience because you can't have knowledge of all contexts at all times at all moments in the future and in the past. Like as as if it were happening in front of you, like that would be God. I mean, God would see all times in the future and past at once, in the way we perceive time. So I mean, that just wouldn't be possible. Well, in this context of the blood types, if I was like, if I had a, if I was, um, I had absolute certainty, would that mean I would say a hey, bloods are compatible no matter what factors change, or is that what that means, mm -hmm. or does that mean? they will these factors will always be true and there's no other factor that can affect yeah i would if you use just absolute with in the way peacock is using just absolute unqualified like without the word context i do think you would mean something like that so but if somebody said well this is true no matter what that's the only way i could have certainty is this absolute sense and then you find the rh factor and then you say like well, that demolished what I knew before. Time to begin with a new idea. Like, that's what you could do, even. Like, it could lead you to do that, just that you have to demolish everything you knew before every time you figure out something new or different. But I don't know. So is that when you have absolute certainty you d demolish? I didn't get that. Well, if you wanted abs if absolute certainty without any consideration for context would be like that, would be like, once you reach some conclusion, it's always true. There's nothing that will change or it could even change her. And then if anything did change, it would change and validate what you learned, or what you knew. Okay. okay. That's what you would do, I think, if you, if that was your standard. Like you were saying that you'd have to demolish what you knew every time you learned something new because you're at the absolute truth has, you've realized it was something else than it was. You'd have yeah. to change it all the time. And it, it's a mess. Mm, I think I, I do some of that automatically. Like if I, one thing is wrong, then I'm like, oh, it's all wrong. That's the context. It's the metaphysical yeah. uh, <laughs> metaphysics of like, I don't know, everything, absolute certainty, omniscience or something like that. Anyway, um, yeah. this is, I think I sort of asked this before, but it's that question of like, let's say well, I'm doing this, I'm a scientist and I'm doing these kind of tests. Can't think of any reason for them not to be compatible. Would it be arbitrary to say that there may be another unaccounted for factor? It's hard. I think, you know, looking at this question now, Sometimes. it's not, I think looking at this question now, it's the issue is that I don't have, you need the knowledge about the subject with which you're talking about. Like I need to know about bloods. If I spoke to a, a blood researcher, he would, they, he or she would be able to tell me like, um if that this question is logical or not yeah it might be if you said it as a layperson 
it might be arbitrary, but if a well-learned biologist said something, the same thing, it might not be arbitrary. So sometimes yes, sometimes no. Is how I would answer your question there. The, the motivation behind this question was, um, again, that fear of like, well, I get this contextual certainty thing, but it seems like using this epistemology, like I can't even think of other factors because it's all arbitrary because unless there's a basis for seeing another factor, well, shouldn't think of it. It doesn't exist. But based on this example, there are other factors and they might just kill you. <laughs> the, that's like the thing I keep going back to is like, well, you're not allowed to think about it because it, it's arbitrary um, if you can't see any evidence for it, but it, it's still, there are unknowns. Like we know that the and unknowns exist. Um, yeah. I mean, that's just reconciling that in a way, like you recognize your fallibility. So there's nothing wrong with learning more about a subject and you can keep learning. And then as you learn, you might realize something. Oh yeah. Maybe I should can start considering another thing. So I should go back to this thing I learned before, take another look at it, maybe reduce it again, just to see maybe there's something different now. Maybe now I have good evidence to say that, oh, there could be another factor. So we're not saying don't think about other factors because it would be arbitrary, but rather you don't need to propose another factor unless you have some evidence or reason to say so, or like, like oh, I learned something new. Yeah. I should check again. That could be a time when you realize that your context has if you realize that there's more to the context, then you had to realize, or that there's other contexts that you might want to consider about this same information. Like, yeah, like I, you were I saying can... about, go ahead. Yeah, like we were, you, you continue, like we were saying about. Like what I was saying about if you went to Alaska and saw that the sun didn't set that day just because of the way the earth is tilted. I mean, that would be something like you learned something. Now you got to reconsider what you had, what you thought before. And then it would be appropriate to question, like, maybe there's another factor. Um, I can see that. Yeah. Again, I will need to spend some time and think of, right. I'm sh I don't think, I think I could come up with examples that this applies to outside of science. Like, if it's epistemology, it's got to apply to everything. So, right. you know, like even social situations, you could like simple For things, sure. uh, your own thinking, um, emotions. I, I don't know. I'm sure I could find. And then because yeah. the content we have knowledge of, we could then talk about it better. But when it's yeah. like this, it's too distant for me to be, right. I'm, I'm possibly asking dumb questions that don't apply because I don't have knowledge of the content. So we'll skip it. Yeah, I think contextual certainty we've got could handle on now. I don't know. Just see if there's a question that's different okay. than these sort. Yeah, I'll have a look. We'll keep previously unknown factors. Did that. Get okay, absolute relativism. Say so we did that. I'm kind of what is what is relativism though? Absolute I get it's like never changes, but relativism? Like everything is, it depends, or everything is like, you can't, it's not true or false. It's just all maybes and possibilities and no certainty. Ah, oh, this is going back to the skepticism that we spoke about, yes. I think two sessions ago when you mentioned like being 99% certain about every, every, or not being, being like only 99% convinced. So we're talking about that. That'd probably thing, be right? relativism. Probably. Oh, okay. I mean, cause it's still saying some things it's like saying some things are more true than others, which is weird to say. Like you don't say it's it's more true that the sun will rise tomorrow versus it, or to say it's more true that existence exists than it's true that the sun rises tomorrow. Like you don't weigh the truth, I and mean, the truth is the truth. It it is what it is. Yeah, I suppose when you put it that way, it doesn't make sense. But then I they mean it statistically. Like yes. Is that, some kind of like, well, it might rise. It's very likely to, but that's, uh, I think that's how they weigh truth. Yeah. It's like just everything would be, yes, you're right. Statistics. Really just statistical. Yeah. Uh, okay. A relationship is a measurement. I know that what, what exactly yes. is, I don't know what I was asking here. Um, 
That's an interesting phrase. Isolated revelation. Only a fact that has no relationship to anything. Oh, okay. I was wondering about that. Let me think. I think that, um, Ah, this is what you mentioned before. It's it's just it's on its own. It's always there. It never changes. That that's what he means by no relationship to anything. Just like heaven to heaven to uh, existence or God to existence. No relationship. That's what the meaning is. Yes. Yes. Cool. Ah. Uh. Okay. What's this? Yeah, that's what I just mentioned. The isolated, the isolated revelation. What, what did you say about it? Well, like we were just saying, like it, what you were saying mostly. It, I mean, it's like an idea that just pops in your head or like God uh. just gave, gave it to you and it's like, what's the evidence or anything no it's just popped in there okay it wasn't connected to anything it's just it's it appeared right so rationalism yeah like you don't just say, oh this idea just appeared to me therefore it's, it's true or you can't use that as evidence either you, just yeah. the mere fact that it appeared because you wouldn't know Actually. why is that well it just is and it's not a good basis for anything Or at least because it's cognitive and is just to do with knowledge. It's not like it's not perceptual stuff, so it's useless for that. Makes sense. Mental states. It's funny that expression makes sense. Uh, it's all about the perceptual level. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep, mental state is a genus. I would that sounds right. Um like it's a pretty big one. I mean, you could go maybe a little narrower, but yeah, that's that would be a wider category, yes. Okay, let's go to this. You could even call them like knowledge states. Ignorance. It's a type of mental state, but anyway, I'll just keep going. Yeah, okay. possible is between knowledge and ignorance is it um i guess what i'm trying to work out is i well i, I think he sort of answered the question in saying it is a continuum meaning you do have a bit of knowledge it indicates like that you have a certain amount of knowledge until you get to certainty but it, i was at the time yeah. i asked this question i was trying to work out are they like distinct qualities along this continuum but if it's a continuum by definition then it means no, there's no distinct qualities of like possible, probable. It's a continuum. And along the continuum, you pick up more and more knowledge. That's that's how I understand it now. But when I asked this question, I wasn't sure. Yeah, I mean, Does that, that sounds right. That sounds I mean, right. Ignorance would be lower on the scale, like to like not even aware that there is other knowledge or something like that. But yeah, I mean, ignorance would be much lower on a case of certainty because you don't even know it's there. Yeah. And arbitrary would even be beneath that like it's not even false it's just nothing well arbitrary, arbitrary wouldn't even be on that continuum right it would just be like uh, yeah different... you're probably right um it doesn't even fit on the continuum yeah that's the right way to look at it okay i would i can answer this question now because when i asked this I, I was thinking about this later after i wrote all this stuff uh this one i think that's not true you've achieved knowledge even if you only if you say something is likely it doesn't mean you have knowledge you doesn't it just means you don't have certainty about something but you have some knowledge about it right so yes i agree yeah cool all right that's easy i wrote an essay about that kind of thing once send it to me later yeah is that on the forum no actually it is oh, okay. oh. on my sub forum but it was an essay I wrote for school that I put into the form. 
is that uncertainty? Kind of. Not directly, but it's a lot about it. Okay. That's just a lot of related stuff. Ah, oh, this one was interesting to me and I had a lot of questions about it that came up later. So it makes sense. Uh, capacities of a species is not evidence. Actually, let's, uh, let's uh, maybe start wrapping up before we get into this one because it's quite long. And I'll stop.